Are you hunting for gold? Yeah. Are you gonna find any? Yes. All right. So we're running the Gold Monster 1000s. We're gonna go hunt and see what we can find. And uh, I'll explain some geology. The geology out here is very interesting. You got two deposition models going on at once. So you got the Muddy Creek Formation and you have a detachment fault with a series of parallel sheeted veins over here, fissure filling veins. And so you have gold deposition coming from those two sources from multiple time periods. I've talked extensively about the Muddy Creek Formation. In fact, there's been a lot of bulletins that have been written on it. Bulletin 1361, if you're really curious. But what is not talked about is the fissure filling vein structures that are out here. And that's what I'm gonna show you. This is what I'm talking about. These are fissure filling vein structures. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a quartz vein running inside of this quartz monzonite. Quartz monzonite is in the granite family, okay? Don't let the name fool you. It doesn't, it actually has less quartz in it than granite. So you have quartz monzonite with fracture running through it. And then you have hydrothermal fluids that have come up through. As they've come up through, of course, they drop in temperature and pressure, and then they begin to solidify and crystallize. And if there's any mineral assemblages in with that, they'll drop out a solution as well. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. See this? This is a quartz vein that was running through this rock, like I showed you earlier. It was like this. It had a small fracture in it, just enough for those hydrothermal fluids to get in there. And as they came to the surface, they began to cool, the pressure and temperatures dropped, began to crystallize. You can see that I have, these actually were cubes of pyrite at one time. And you can see that all the sulfur has oxidized out. This is all weathered. And you can see some limonite in there as well. And these are referred to as pseudomorphs. It just means it's this is pseudomorphed after whatever it was before. So if you're gonna find any gold, it'll be in this area here. We have all this limonite and all this mineralization here. Do you see that? Okay, look at that. Oh, isn't that nice? See that? You can see all your silicon dioxide right here. All your iron. If there's going to be any gold that will be associated here where the pyrite used to be. You can see the lime and I didn't be associated with this too. This is the other type of vein structure that's out here. That's why you got a lot of quartz out here, this bull quartz barren quartz that has that iron staining on it. It's from all those pseudomorphs that are weathering away. And that's where your gold will be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look exclusively for any of these outcroppings and see if we can find any gold associated with it. There's another example right there, you see that? Oh, look at these new scoops I got. We're gonna talk about that too. That one's from Doc's Detected. All right, now a lot of you out there have heard me talk about alluvial deposits as far as plaster deposition goes, but you not, haven't heard me talk a lot about alluvial deposits, which are up here on the hillsides. Now they're a little harder to find and chase, but if you find one, oh, they can be extremely rich because that means the source is nearby. So I got this beautiful hillside here. There's tons and tons of float and there's outcroppings all over the place. And a lot of them are heavily stained with iron from the pseudomorphs. A lot of staining, red staining. And that is a good sign. I'll get a spoon, hold on. What's your indicator saying? Before us. It keeps jumping to the right. Yeah. You want to dig it? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. 
All right, now I got two types of spoons here I want to show you real quick. I know my wife's like, hey, stop jaw jacking and help me dig this target. But no, I got this one from Steve Hamilton over at Make Your Own Gold Bars. It's got a different design than most of your scoops. So, and then we got the traditional one that I like that has the riffles in it. Now, I know I always mention that the gold lady has these, but also if you're in the Las Vegas area, Docs Detecting in Las Vegas carries tons of these ones. And these are the ones that have the little riffles in them. You see me use that all the time. So I'm gonna give my wife an option which one she wants to use. You want the dark green one or the light green one? I guess the dark because you used the other one before, so I'm curious how that works. All right, there's the dark green one. I like the light green one, but we'll give them both a fair shake. Exactly. Remember when you're working with VLF, this is a VLF, the 1000. You wanna swing fast. You don't wanna swing slow. And if you want to read ground balance, ground balance in a circle, like such. Get a taste of that ground. You see that? You hear that, that trailing off? That bing, like a laser beam? Hot rock. Don't even mess with it. Now, another problem is the end of these cords on the search coil. If they hit these bushes, see that? It's going to give me a false signal. If the ground is too hot, back off on your sensitivity. See that? The wobble pop. All right, so. First thing you do, make sure you don't have any jewelry on. Lay that thing out flat. Gonna rake that area out flat. Okay, it's over here. When you're running that search coil, don't be afraid to drag it on the ground. That's what these coil covers are for. You can wear those out all day long. Trust me, if you do this right, you'll go through one of these about once a week. Now you're gonna have hot rocks that sound just like gold nuggets. So you're gonna dig everything that sounds like it. And I recommend wearing gloves. Bare hands, you don't know what's in there. Tap, tap, tap. Just like that. Look at that monker. Can you see him? Right there. Oh yeah! Look at that monker, yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm gonna do the dance, don't worry. Always check your holes. And when you find targets like this, especially if they have quartz on them, they're referred to as specimens. Make sure you mark this on a map because if you grid off this area, you'll start to see patterns form. And then that will show you where the source is at. And that is what you're really looking for. All right, let's keep going up this hill and see what we can find. When you're swinging your detector, try not to do your pendulum swing. I've seen too many people do that. See how much depth I'm losing? I know I'm exaggerating, but look at that. Same here. Here, that's about all I'm getting is right here in the middle. So focus on keeping that coil to the soil. I got another quartz vein and quartz monzonite. See that? They're all over the place up here. Beautiful. Especially if they have iron staining in them. And there's another one. I found one of the veins. Look at how heavily mineralized that quartz vein is. See it right here? It's running all through here. There's a big section of it right here. See that? Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Now, look what happens when I hit it with a detector. There's so much iron in there. It 
See that? So this is the vein, and this is what we're looking for. You're gonna slowly grid this area off, metal detect it. If the pieces sound off and you can't see visible gold in them, break them open. If that doesn't work, then crush them down. This is definitely the vein right here. And I can see that there's a parallel vein up there too. Yeah. So we've been working long hours in the drift mine, and here you can see we've dropped the sump down even deeper. Well, our last time, and we're installing an apron. Now watch my light right here, watch. Things like that happen all the time down there. Thank you. 